then I then I think it's very important for them and it has, has resonance for them in their their own lives and I think that's a real key it's really important to um, put the past and present and future together in some basic way and I'm hoping that this trip makes that possible As I listen to my children and my grandchildren uh, talk and see them working in the school system, I see very little about the history of, uh, of our struggle. I think if we don't want the history to repeat itself, if we want the total, the total population of this nation to understand uh, what has happened during all these years of, uh, of oppression, of a particular race of folks, primarily black folks, then it should be documented. Don't hide this history. And he said, dinner is not until six, and I am in no hurry. That gave me the wonderful privilege to spend the last hour of his life with him. Three preachers in a room, Abernathy, King, and Kyles. And of the three, I am the only one left. Jim had gone unconscious. He was holding my hand. The, the internal bleeding was such that it was increasing and, and creating tremendous pain in, his, in him, apparently. And he was holding my hand and squeezing my hand tighter and tighter as the pain got worse. And finally, he let his hand relax. He went unconscious. So I was holding his hand as he went unconscious and was unconscious for the last time. As a matter of fact, I never thought I'd live to be 25 years old. But I'd already decided I was going to die. And since I was going to die, I might as well die for something. Uh, and, uh, and liberation was the thing that, uh, that caught my soul. I wish there was some way that you could uh, model uh, capture the essence of what is happening here. Well, these young people would never ever be the same. We slowly walk through the streets of Selma. We came close to the edge of the bridge crossing the Alabama River and we continued to walk. We came to the highest point on the Edmund Pettus Bridge Less than a minute and a half, Major John Clow said, Troopers advance! And you saw these men putting on their gas masks. They came toward us, beating us with night sticks, releasing their tear gas. I was hit in the head by a state trooper with a night stick. I thought I was going to die. I thought I saw death. As you well know, it all kind of started with the, uh, the Medgar Evers case. And Medgar Evers was killed, which you probably have heard or realized by now, is Medgar Evers was killed here in Jackson in uh, June 12, 1963, uh, shot in the driveway of his own home. And it was the same night that President Kennedy addressed the nation to talk about how all Americans should be treated equally. Medgar celebrates into the night. They drive home on, if he drives home, he pulls in the driveway. There's a car already here, he pulls behind it. The driver's side faced an open alleyway there, so it was an easy target. So he got out the driver's side, which was this, and it faced the side of the house. He went right away to hide. He stepped out of the car. He was carrying t shirts that said, Jim Crow must go and a gunshot rang out from over there. 
about 200 yards away. The bullet went through Medgar's back. It went through his chest. That same bullet went through this window right here. When they go home, are they going to be silent? Where will they take a stand because it's right? Eli Wiesel, famous Holocaust survivor, said it wasn't the people who are the most evil who caused it to happen. It was the people who did nothing. It was indifference. One of our goals of this trip is students aren't silent witnesses, that they will take a stand because it's the right thing to do, and they will not be indifferent. And Central High School, the courtyard, is the perfect place to write about it. This is their testimonial to not be silent witnesses. You can't be a silent witness. You just cannot allow yourself to watch something and not like it and not say anything. That's just something that you have to remember. All the people here who have gone on this trip are gonna be leaders and they're gonna try to make those changes and I know I'm gonna try my hardest. When I came on this trip, I wasn't expecting for it to be so overwhelming. A lot of people feel nowadays that uh, they can't do anything for the world. And I'm 16 years old and I feel I can do so much now. I really wish that this could become a project from east to west, north to south. At the end of every trip, when I take them to the airport in Memphis, and I get the hugs, and I look at their faces, I know right then that they will go back to their home schools and uh, within their homes and make a difference.